Welcome to the third video in my Getting Started with the Usebox video game console series. In this video I'm going to demonstrate how to create a MIDI file with a percussion track using Rose Garden on Linux. And then we'll explore how to convert and integrate that to a Usebox project. In the interest of time, I'm going to use a companion Usebox project that I've hosted on GitHub, so I don't have to type out all the patch commands by hand. Alright, so this time I'm using a Debian 9 live image, so I'm starting from scratch again. So let's just quickly get our development environment set up. This time, instead of putting Q's box inside the tools directory, I'm just going to put it right here. Makes it easier to run. All right, so. All right, so now we're back where we are. Now I'm just going to download the companion project. So, create a clone. Rose Garden tutorial. All right. So, we'll take a look at this. And uh, the source code is pretty simple. Um, just include the patches, the song, we have a, just an example tile set. Um, the important part is we init music player with patches and we'll, I'll show you that later. Um, just draw a graphic, wait a second, and then we call start song. There's also stop song, resume song, um, and then just go into an endless loop. And now we'll take a look at the patches file. So these are the instruments. So I'm just using some predefined ones that I've modified. So I got a flute, square piano, and uh, pizzicato. We're not using the pizzicato in this tutorial, but it's there in case you want to add a third track, um, a third melody track, then you could, it'll use this instrument. And then for the percussion track, we have a bass drum and a crash cymbal. And the percussion track, um, it uses um, the noise generator. So you can see we have a patches array where we have our flute, square piano, pizzicato, and we have our noise patches. Another thing that we want to look at is the make file. So the important part here for using um, the percussion channel is we want to make sure that we have the noise channel enabled. So right here I just did dash D sound mixer equals one as part of the kernel options and you want dash D sound channel five and equal equals one. So if you don't have that, um, your percussion might not work. All right, so as a teaser, I'll let you hear what it's gonna sound like when we're done. So. And it just starts over again. Um, so if you'll notice, the main the main melody is played on a flute, and then there's the square piano on top of that, and then there's the noise track with a percussion on top of that. So that's just a little teaser. 
All right, so before we get started, we're going we're gonna to actually delete that song. Um, but we won't actually delete it. We'll just back it up somewhere else so we have the original to compare to. So go to the data directory, and we can we could just move all the MIDI songs into the backup directory. Now this project won't build because we've deleted that. So the best way I found to compose music for Usebox games is to use a Linux program called Rose Garden, which is a MIDI sequencer. Using Rose Garden, you can compose and edit MIDI files, but by itself it cannot generate sound. For that, you'll need to install a MIDI synthesizer, and Timidity is what I found to be the easiest to install and use. So let's get started. Here, we'll just open up a new terminal with Control shift t and sudo apt install rose garden and timidity. So we could just answer no because configuring jack is pretty complicated. All right, so um, before you run rose garden, you're going to want to run timidity. And we want to tell it to be uh, like a MIDI, like run server mode. So timidity dash I A. And you could see that um, it started in also server mode. So now when we run Rose Garden, it should be able to find it and you'll actually be able to hear sounds. So let's open up a new tab, Control Shift T. And we'll run Rose Garden in here. Um, you could run it from the GUI, but if you run it in the terminal, you'll get some output. So if there's any problems, you'll be able to see them and diagnose them. So, so we'll just run that. So eventually it finds the ALSA server that Timidity created. So we can just answer OK. I'm using a really tiny screen uh, just so you guys could read everything on the video. Um, normally I'm using this, you know, in you know, full HD mode, so not everything is smushed together. So we can just shrink this down a little bit. Um, so we only need four tracks. So you can click on them and hit Control D and just delete every, every one except for four. So one of the first things we'll want to do is set the instruments. So we'll click on the first track, and that's already on one. Click on the second track. We'll change that to instrument two. Now these, even though these have names, it doesn't correspond to what's in your use box project. So just look at the numbers. So this is two, two, three, three, and Four, four. All right, so now we're going to lay down our first segment. And since this is scrunched, I'm just going to change the zoom so we could see a little bit more. So the pencil is the edit. So we'll click on the first track and we'll just drag this over. We'll do 12 measures. And you could ignore what it's called. So then we'll want to use the matrix editor. You can either click this button or hit M. And here's a zoom here. You can zoom vertically or horizontally, depending on what you want to see. Or you can click that to reset the zoom. All right. So we'll just we'll just start with a simple song. Um, we'll change the grid to quarter notes. I'll scroll back to the beginning. So for the longer note, I just drag it across. You can see how it made it a half note. And then All right. So I'll scroll over. All right, 
so now the rest of the song is, is just a repeat of what's there. So we can select the arrow, highlight it, hold down the control key, and then just drag it and drop it. And we'll go back and grab the other notes, hold down the control key. You can see in the status bar it tells you what you can do. So hold down the control key. We'll We'll drag this. All right, so we click. Now we'll rewind and we'll just listen. And it'll keep playing, so you gotta hit stop and you can rewind. So that's our first track. We could hit save. And we will go to the use box directory, to my games, Rose Garden Tutorial Data, and we will call this MIDI song. So we're just saving it right over where the other one was. So now we'll We'll lay down the other track, um, click back to the arrow, and make sure it's rewound. And you can, you could also hold down the control key, drag this, and drop it. And you can see it copies it. So now we have another track. We can open it up in the matrix editor. And this time, let's delete the second half. You just highlight them, hit the delete key. And now what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to resize these so we can have like triple notes on each one. So first what we want to do is we want to change the grid to 12th notes. And then you want to click on the edge of the note. And then when you drag, you can resize it. Then we'll just hold down the control key and make copies. So. So essentially what we're doing is we're turning each quarter note into a twelfth note, actually three twelfth notes. And then we'll just turn the half note into two quarter notes. So if you mess up, you could hit Control Z and undo it. Oh, we just hold down control, copy that. And now we can hit control A to select everything. And we'll just drag them, drag them up to C6. All right, so um, what we can do is clicking this little blue circle will mute a track. So since we already heard the first track, let's listen to the second track in isolation. So rewind.
All right, and if you want to hear them both at the same time, you could, you know, unmute that. So, right, we don't need to listen to the whole thing. Okay, so those are our first two tracks. Now, um, percussion tracks work a little bit differently. Um, they use the noise channel on the use box, and it's, it's always track four. So, um, let's click on the edit thing, and we will... a 14 measure percussion track. So before I forget, um, you're going to want to put start and end markers. So you can just right click here, say insert marker, double click on it, and double click, and then change the text to an S. Now I didn't click right on the edge when I was defining it, so you can just, you know, hit the down arrows to get it on an even measure. So description, you know, you don't need a comment. So, okay, so there's our start marker. Um, now here we can go over here and we'll, we'll put an end marker at measure 15. So, so E and we want this to be right on 15, so. So that tells the the use box where to start and where to end on the song for when it repeats. So, and um, if you have a really long composition, um, you could change the composition start and end. Um, so, you see, we we only have fifteen measures here, but this goes out to a hundred. You know, I had a really long song that was more than a hundred, so I had to figure out how to do this. So if you go to the composition menu, change composition, start and end. Let's just make it end on 16. So there we go. So a couple other things to note, um, just like when you're in the matrix editor, here you can click on a segment and drag it to expand or contract it. Um, you could also put another segment after, you can drag them all around. Um, the one thing that you're going to want to be careful of um, for the use box is when you're laying down notes, you only want to have one note per track. So if you were to add a note down here, then um, it wouldn't be able to play it. It'll only play one note. It'll only play one note at a time per track. So if you need to play two notes at once or, or more than one note at once, what you can do is you can set multiple tracks to have the same instrument and then they'll have to be, the notes that happen at the same time will have to be on different tracks. All right, so let's lay down the percussion track. So if you notice um, back here, um, if you look at our patches, so we have three tracks for the melody and the way the percussion track works on the use box is you lay down a note that corresponds to the percussion instrument you want to use relative to this patches array. So you see here we have one, two, three, there it's, it's zero, one, two, and then three and four. So if you go to Rose Garden and you look at this, scroll all the way down, um, you're going to want to actually put your note here. Let's change that to quarter. Uh, so you're going to want to, whatever key you click on here, that's going to correspond to the position in that array. So the first three are our melody, so we have to start on, on these. So. And you don't really hear anything because I think the honky tonk piano isn't defined in um, in timidity. That's okay. You don't really want to. You don't really want to hear these when you play these back. It sounds like low keys on the piano, and that's not really helpful because that's not what it's actually going to sound like. It's actually going to sound like whatever patch you put in your patch array. So 
All right, so we have this. Um, so we'll save that. And that looks good. All right, so now we're going to export that as a MIDI file. So if you go to the File menu, Export, Export MIDI file. So we'll go to the data directory and we'll call it MIDI song. All right, so. So we have our Rose Garden file. We have our MIDI. And if you noticed before, there's a .h file. So this is a hex array of the MIDI file that's been transformed into the use box format. So now we're going to have to transform it so the use box can use it. So So when you type make, it runs the make contents of the make file. I, write, I like to write a little script called scratch that will do everything from scratch. So what it does is it runs gconvert on the tile set .xml file, so you can get an include file for that. And then what it does is it runs a program called midicon, midiconv that it accepts a speed parameter and various other parameters. And it converts the MIDI file into a header file that the usebox project can use. So um, that's in the usebox bin directory. So if you run it with no options, it will show you everything you can do. So there's a speed factor. So generally I found like 8 or 8.5 kind of matches up with how fast it plays back in Rose Garden. Um, you could experiment with that. You could make it go really fast or really slow. Um, if you put the start and end markers in your MIDI file with Rose Garden, you don't need to bother with these parameters. Um, the bug is helpful if you want to see what's going on with the MIDI. And um, these are note off events. Now, to save space on the use box, you don't have to include note off events. Normally it doesn't. But what that means is that if you have a note that ends, it won't actually end. It'll stay on until another note starts playing on that track. So it could really change the way your, your song sounds if you don't include the note off events. If you can have the space, include them, and it'll sound much better. In this example, I do include the note off events because it sounds much, much better. Um, so we could, we could run it by hand uh, first, and then we can try the scratch. So, speed of 8, we'll include note off commands for tracks 1, 2, and 3, even though there's nothing on track 3. So, midi song.mid and midi song.h, which is what the output file is. So, you can see it output the file midi song.h, and it was 1440 bytes. So there you go. Um, now we can go back to the default directory. And since we already have the hex file and the use file, um, let's just go make clean. We'll get rid of them. Now that you saw how to run MidiConf by hand, we'll just run the scratch. That'll delete everything, recompile it. And if you scroll up here, you'll see that. It converted the tile set for the graphic and it reran MIDICOV, generated the H file, and then it recompiled the whole program. So now we have a use file, we have a hex file, and a use file. So let's see if it worked.
repeat. So, so that's why the start and end markers are important. All right, so that wasn't actually that hard. So now I'll talk about some more advanced things um, in Rose Garden that you can do. Um, so here, let's start by increasing the length of our composition. All right, so we'll just go, I'm going to say 30. All right, now, um, say you had a long song and you wanted to, um, you had different sections of it that repeated and stuff like that. What you could do is you could hold down control, copy those segments, um, but then if you found out that you made a mistake in, in this one, um, say, you know, you, these two notes were in the wrong spot you wanted, and you wanted them like down here, um, you would have to edit that here and you would have to edit it in every single copy of that segment. So what you can do instead is you can create lin linked segments. So if you look at the status bar, it says, you know, control alt for a linked copy. So if you hold down control and alt and you drag one of your segments over, now you have a linked copy. So let's open this in the matrix editor and hopefully we can see up here. Um, so we'll go to edit. And you can see how as we're dropping notes on this one segment, it's actually editing the linked copy as well. Um, so that's just one way that you can really speed up developing uh, a longer song. And of course, you know, now that we've moved this, our end marker doesn't line up, so you can just double click on it and um, you can just you know, pick what measure you want it to end on. So, so that's one of the things you can do. Another thing that you can do is more of an optimization technique. So say you have a whole bunch of segments on a track. Um, when you export that, every time you start a new segment, there's a bunch of stuff that gets included in the MIDI file that um, is going to be the same, like setting the volume and setting a bunch of the other control commands. Um, so what I found to make your MIDI file the smallest on the use box, since space, space is a concern, um, if you have multiple segments on your tracks. Um, if you go to file export, you know, you'll get a, a kind of a bloated MIDI file. But what you can do is click on the track to select every segment, and then you could hit Control J, and that'll join them. Um, be really careful, because if you, it'll destroy all your linked copies. Um, but what you do is you could join them all like this, only when you want to export the MIDI file. Then you can go to export, export MIDI file. So we won't overwrite this. We'll just say joined and we'll save this. And then what we're going to do before you do anything is we're going to undo, 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 undo. You don't want to save your main Rose Garden file with those joined um, because if you had them linked, you probably want to keep them linked. So if you only have a couple segments, I don't expect the size difference to be that big. But if you have hundreds of segments, then it could actually save you a lot of space. All right, so we're just going to do one more thing. Um, go File, Revert. And we'll go back to our main one that's correct. And I just wanted to show you the third track. So we can go here and we will We can just do like a little thing at the end or whatever. Yeah, we'll just... So... Export MIDI file. And then if you do scratch from the default directory, 
it'll rebuild it and then now we should hear something with a third instrument the pizzicato at the very end just to show you how easy it is to add a new track So see, had those other two notes and a different instrument. Um, that could be fun. Um, so we'll just resave it and export this so it's correct. Um, so if you want to learn more about how the sound stuff works on the use box. go to the wiki and look at the sound resources so uh, the sound engine explains you know kind of the theory behind it um, talks more about the patches um, there's other effects that you can do that aren't per se a music track or a MIDI track just generic sound effects um, there's a whole slew of patch commands like if you're editing the instrument uh, there's a whole bunch of things you can do to get different sounding instruments um, if you want to learn more about how to make instrument patches, uh, there's this thing on the wiki that talks about the instrument patches, explains envelopes and everything like that. Um, so there's a bunch of resources out there, and um, you could find a whole bunch of example uh, patches for instruments or for sound effects that you can use. So check the wiki, check the forum. Forum is at usebox.org slash forums. All right, so thanks for watching. Have a good day.